Welcome everybody, all our Hall of Famers, our family, friends, to this uh, great ceremony and uh, it's been so much fun. It's been a lot of work, but so much fun just reliving the history because you all have stories to tell and you all were such a big part of the history of Walla Tosa West. Again, my name is Jeff Gabrielson, the Athletic Director here at Tosa West. And this is going to be an awesome evening. I hope you all can be here for the duration. After this, we're going to go to the, the wall where your plaques are. We're going to unveil it. And then you're going to do the spaghetti dinner. And then hopefully go to the game. I have reserved seats for you at the game. And then you're going to be all introduced in front of the crowd, the sellout crowd, uh, right before the boys basketball game. So it's going to be a great, great day. Hall of Famer. What does that mean? Well, I looked at Webster's Dictionary, and it says individuals acclaimed as outstanding in a particular profession, sport, or activity. Famous people. Well, our 14 inductees on stage are being recognized for reaching the pinnacle of their profession or sport during their career at Tulsa West. Congratulations to all of you, and please enjoy this evening. Why 13? How did you come up with the number 13? Well, Dan was a, Daniel G was a part of a, a, our committee that uh, explored the history of uh, uh, Tulsa West to get all your names. But I thought, well, let's go with 13, and we're bound to get 8 to 10 to show up. Well, I can't tell you the reception we had from all of you once I was unbelievable work. We didn't get 8 of 13, not 10 of 13, not 12 of 13. All 13 are being represented here tonight. So give them a <laughs> As you're going to see in a little bit, Debbie Arps has a little FBI experiment and it could have used her uh, database to find some of you. In fact, uh, the one that took us the longest to find was right in our backyard. Uh, Karen, <laughs> well, your sister at work to find you, so we, we finally did, and it's, uh, it's going to be a great evening. Before we get started, I would like to introduce our principal, and rumor has it, a future Hall of Famer, uh, who will bring you up to date with everything that all the exciting things taking place in the Wauwatosa School District, and specifically Wauwatosa West High School. So I'm going to give a big round of applause to Mr. Frank Clark. Welcome. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I actually graduated from Tulsa West in 1983 and spent a lot of time actually on this stage. Uh, actually was in Greece and Danny Zuko, you're looking at Danny Zuko, right? <laughs> <laughs> Might do a little grease lightning for you. Uh, emotional day for me today as uh, growing up in Tulsa. Uh, I used to go down to Hart Park and I'd watch Danny Relich, one of our Hall of Famers, on the football field. And a couple years later, Danny Benson. And then uh, came to school here and was coached by Coach Thompson. Coach Thompson picked me up when I was in seventh grade at my house. Hey, I'm bringing you to a wrestling tournament today. I said, I'm a basketball player. Now you're a wrestler. <laughs> um, Coach Benson, obviously, four years of track. And Coach White was actually my phi ed teacher. And I hated to swim, but darn it, you swam for Coach White. <laughs> otherwise, uh, well, you didn't like what he would do to you otherwise, right, Coach White? Um, and then I was thinking about afterwards. What did I want to do in life? Well, I think I owe everything in my life to athletics. And so I went into teaching and coaching and then had the opportunity to coach two of our Hall of Famers, Becky and uh, Jill, two of the best athletes uh, I've ever come across and just great individuals. The only person up on this stage that I didn't really have a connection with was uh, 1968 Tim Folks swimmer. And then we figured out that he had two sisters that were our cheerleaders in 1980. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember them. <laughs> there, there was a connection. Karen Weiss and I hung out a few times. Uh, she was a long time rep for Miller. Uh, every once in 
once in a while I sampled her product for her. <laughs> and uh, looking at the rest, Coach Jansen used to live right across the street and his wife, every once in a while when they weren't around, um, we might happen to end up at their house for a little social gathering. Johnny Thompson and uh, Mary are in the crowd today for, for Coach Thompson. Stopped at their house every once in a while on the way to school and Johnny and I would get into trouble. Uh, Art Sanders, you may not think that we knew of you, Art Sanders, but trust me, Coach Sutton had pictures of you and we looked at him and he told us how great you were and how we had to be just like you and well, none of us really could be because you were the best ever. And, uh, but it's good to see you here. And then you had, uh, you didn't know this, Miss Arps, but uh, your dad actually taught me. He was a professor at Concordia for a couple of years, and I had his public relations course. So, again, a real emotional day for me uh, growing up as a Tulsa boy. And I, I wanted to give out a couple of thank yous. Uh, three years ago, I said to Coach Gabrielson, probably the best hire I've ever made in my lifetime, you should always try to hire people smarter than you and people who can outwork you, and that's what Coach uh, Gabe is. And I said to him, Gabe, I really want to get a Hall of Fame going here at West. He said, I'll take care of it. And uh, you know, here we are today. So thank you to Coach Gabe. <laughs> and he's going to kill me for doing this. I hope I still have a job. But if everybody turned this way, and I'm going to make you stand up, Dr. Earl, because I'm about to talk about all the uh, Dr. Earl, be standing. Thompson knew that, that's where Coach Thompson also graduated from. But Dr. Earl has been instrumental in um, the upkeep and, and the rejuvenation of our athletic fields in Wauwatosa. Uh, a few years back, they, we got AstroTurf on our, uh, on our baseball field over at Fisher, now called Wrightlow Field. The soccer field has been redone, uh, AstroTurf, that's a shared field between East and West. We have brand new tennis courts. Uh, they're only three years old, uh, the best in our conference as well. Uh, the gyms, the gyms at both East and West and, and Whitman were redone, new floors, new backboards, new paint. Uh, we're working on the sound system. Uh, and then most recently, just last Monday, the school board approved $1.6 million for Wauwatosa West to get a brand new football stadium. So how about that? <laughs> community and also our school board understands that not always will kids come home and, and jump up for joy and tell you about their math test, but boy, when they score two points in the varsity game, it, it's important to them. And, and the school board also realizes all the things that are taught through athletics, the hard work, the perseverance, uh, the teamwork, the setting of goals, the uh, you know trying to be motivated, self-motivated, discipline, all those things, and I know uh, the people who I'm closest to, you know, whether you're on the stage or some of my uh, track buddies that are here today to support coaches, we all know that we walk around saying some of the things that we heard our coaches. We hated when our coaches were, were yelling at us and saying those things to us, and now we're doing it to our students and to our, uh, well, my own children. So thanks for coming today. Uh, I'll tell you, we, we, Jeff and I are just chatting about this. We didn't realize the outpouring of people and support we would get. Had we realized it, we, you know, we would have reached out and did a better job of promoting this and getting more teachers from this era back and letting more people know. Um, we just, we're, we're just floored by the support. So thank you for coming. And congratulations <coughs> to all of, all, all of Famers. I look forward to meeting with you guys today. Thank you, Mr. Clarko. It's hard for me to say, Mr. Clarko, because I also coached Frank uh, in college. And uh, if we had an extra three hours, I could tell you other stories about him in college. But we'll, 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 we'll focus on the, uh, the inductees up here on the stage. Uh, what, I talked to a few of you out in the lobby. And what we're trying to do here, I don't know who, who I was at the Arrowhead one. Who, uh, I can't remember now. Which group was from the Arrowhead that's going to give a report back to Arrowhead? Where 
they started in, I think the last inductee was like five hours after they started. And, and that kind of takes away from the, that's why we didn't want to have a presenter. And I'm going to present everyone by just reading your bio. Sometimes the bios sound better with a little voice inflection. And then you're going to come up and just share a couple, couple three, four minutes and, and, and head back down where sometimes I, I've been at Hall of Fame ceremonies gets carried away and all of a sudden they got a five hour PowerPoint project <laughs> that uh, three people in the audience uh, really want to see. So I, I, I think we're going to find that this might be a very uh, a good, good way to do it. So first up, we're going to go in alphabetical order. And this was one of uh, Debbie's worst fears because she always was first with her name. And she was, we're not going to go alphabetical order, are we? Uh, yes, we are. So I'm going to get her flag. I'm going to put the glasses on. I don't know if that won't be able to hear. But, but Debbie, again, is in floor, and she is a free sport, 10 varsity letter winner in tennis, basketball, and track and field. Debbie Arp won the first ever WIA State Tennis Singles Championship title as a freshman, and followed that up with a win as a sophomore. Debbie was undefeated in her four years of dual meet competition, compiling a record of 44 and zero. She helped Tulsa West win the state championship twice and finished second twice during her four years. Debbie was also a member of the Suburban Championship basketball team in 1975. Debbie graduated as co-valedictorian with a 4.0 GPA. With several Division I scholarships offered to her, she chose Carroll University. She was a four-year varsity tennis player combined, compiling a record of 55 and six. Debbie was given, or Debbie was a team captain and MVP for four years, won two conference number one singles titles, and made all conference team four times. During her college career, she also led her in basketball, swimming, track, and, and track and field. In addition, she was a cheerleader, very busy. Following college, Debbie taught high school at West Milwaukee and Milwaukee. For five years, she coached boys and girls varsity tennis, girls volleyball, girls basketball, and swimming. She coached cheerleading as well. A nationally ranked tennis player, Debbie held the number one singles ranking in Wisconsin for seven of the nine years she competed in the age division play. In 1986, she won a national singles championship. In 1984, Debbie became a special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. She retired after 29 years of service, Debbie credits her success in sports, as well as life, to her father and coach, Charlie Arps, and her mother, Ellen. Hall of Famer, class of 1975, Hall of Fame class of 2015, Debbie Arps.
So um, it really takes a big sacrifice on the parents' part when your kids are in sports. Um, my father died 20 years ago, and he was a big fan of Tosa West. And he was my coach since I was five years old, but I'm fortunate enough tonight to have the only other coach I've ever known. He started coaching me when I was in high school. Um, Mr. Jerry Sullivan, he's 87 years old. Uh, he came to the event today, and I just want to thank him for coming. Uh, lastly, I think all the coaches up here remember my father. He was such a big fan of Coach West. He went to every sport, wrestling, from the time before I was in high school to long after I graduated from high school. And um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but he loved Tosa West Athletics so much that when he was buried with military honors, he asked that the flag from his casket fly outside of Tosa West, and Tosa West was gracious enough to do that for us. So um, thank you very much, and this one's for my dad. Next up, Mr. Daniel G. Benson. I've actually had the privilege of working with Dan during my uh, three and a half years at Lowell Tosa West because we still host the Daniel Benson Invitational on track meet every May. So uh, again, it's been fun working with you, Dan, and uh, uh, you definitely are a legend here at Tosa West. Dan Benson started teaching and coaching Lowell Tosa at Hawthorne Junior High in 1951. Dan coached football, basketball, and track before coming to Wauwatosa West High School in 1961. He continued teaching at Tosa West until 1985 and coaching until 1987. During those 26 years, Dan made a positive impact on the lives of numerous boys and girls, both in the classroom and on the field of competition. Dan Benson truly is deserving of this recognition, as this is his third Hall of Fame Dan has been inducted. Dan was an assistant football coach from 1961 to 76 and head cross country coach from 76 through 87. Dan's true love was track and field. He was a head boys track coach from 1961 to 1987 and his accomplishments are amazing. Now just listen to this. Dan led the Tulsa West Trojan boys track team to 10 suburban conference championships, 107 individual conference champions, seven state championships, and seven individual state champions. Dan was personally recognized as a Journal Sentinel Coach of the Year in 1984. He was inducted into the Milwaukee State Te Teachers College Athletic Hall of Fame in 1981 and the Wisconsin Swim and Diving Association Hall of Fame in 2002 for his service as a swim official from 1952 to 1996. Dan Benson established the Trojan Athletic Club Track Invitational in 1981, which is now known as the Dan Benson Invitational. The 2015 invite will be the 36th annual Dan Benson invite. Dan's leadership and service to the Wauwatosa community was matched by his service to his country, as he was an active, he was active in the Air Force and the U.S. Army Reserve for 34 years and achieved the level of full colonel. 2005 inductee, Hall of Famer, Coach Dan Benson. and 
Center Street, we, we measured out 100, or then 100 yard dash and 220 yard dash. And we're tying them out there when a squad car pulled up to me. And uh, he said, What are you doing? And I said, Oh, well, can't you see? I was really hurt. But we're running. He said, You can't do that out here. And I said, well, Where do you want us to do it? I was getting really against the honest place. And uh, finally he said, You know, I can take you in. And I said, go ahead and take me up. And then he backed off. <laughs> and, uh, so it was kind of interesting what we had to do. And, and shortly after that, I got a call from the WIA that controls high school athletics. And uh, the caller said, I understand that you coached track for 10 years without a track. And I said, yep. And I said, well, will you write a little article for our book? And so I did. Called it track and field, mostly feel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it went over very well. So that's my story right now. Uh, right, lastly, I would like to thank my family, especially my wife of 65 years, Joyce, for the support they gave me by adjusting their schedules to support mine. Again, I'd like to say thank you to Celeste, and uh, I'm extremely thankful to be here with you. What a special occasion this must be to uh, not only have Daniel G. Benson being inducted to the Hall of Fame, but also his son, Dan Benson. So this is uh, kind of special. I'm sure they're going to really enjoy this evening. But Dan Benson earned eight varsity letters in three sports at Wallacoza West High School. Two in football, two in basketball, four in track. During Dan's senior year in track and field, he was a team captain and earned all-conference, all all-state, all and all-American honors. Dan was conference champion and state champion in a long jump with a school record of 23 feet, eight and a half inches. Dan was also conference champion and school record holder in the high jump with a jump of six feet, seven and a half inches. Dan played quarterback for the Trojans that led the team to a conference championship in 1975. Dan was selected team captain in 1976 and earned all conference honorable mention honor recognition at quarterback. Dan also played a key role with the Tulsa West basketball team in 1976-77. The Trojans were 15-3 in 1977. Dan went on to college at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where he was a four-year letter winner in track and field. In 1981, Dan was team co-captain and all Big Ten in the long jump and triple jump. After college, Dan became a teacher at Homestead High School. Dan was the head boys track coach from 87 to 2013. His teams won six state sectional championship and one state championship in 2010. Dan also was the head boys cross country coach at Homestead from 1987 to 1994. His team won three North Shore Conference championship, three state sectional championship, and were the 91, 1991 state division one runner up. 
Dan Benson grew up in a family that was very connected to Welcome Tosa West. Obviously, his father taught and coached at Tosa West for many years, and his three sisters were also very active as well. Class of 1977, Hall of Fame class of 2015, Hall of Famer, Dan Benson. Thank you. When I reflect upon my current teaching and coaching at Homestead High School, I oftentimes think back to my roots in Wauwatosa, specifically here at West. Um, I happened to come through this school district at a really cool time. Um, the city on the west side was booming, it was growing. My class here at West was over 440 kids. Uh, the school was big. But when I think back growing up, being exposed to the coaches that I grew up with, I do always keep coming back to they laid the foundation for the success at Tulsa West and the reason I'm up here uh, for sure. So I just like to take my two or three minutes really quickly to explain that. Coach White ran a swim program that was so demanding. I heard this thing from a swimmer, uh, a competitive swimmer, but everyone in school knew what their program was about. His biography isn't about all conference and all state, it's about all Americans. He set the bar so high that it just rubbed off on the whole school. The excellence was incredible. If I come down the list to Coach Thompson, when I think of him, I think of communicating in relationships with his athletes. It was very unique. Again, I wasn't a lineman, and I sure wasn't a wrestler. <laughs> But again, when I watched that communication and that rapport he had, I took it with me and I used that every day. And I come down now to Coach Jansen. When I think of him, I think of respect, right off the bat. He was like the Bear Bryant of Tulsa West. <laughs> His first year as head football coach, they won the suburban title. And when I think of these four coaches, Getting that job to open up Tulsa West, I bet you they were incredibly excited. They were young, they had a little bit of experience, but at some point they must have looked at each other and said, oh my Lord, what are we getting into? A brand new school, we're going against Waukesha High School, Whitefish Bay, Cudahy South, Milwaukee, we better, you know, I bet you the reality check was huge. But Coach Jansen had that instant respect and all of his football players, in my case, would eye contact, lock in, and when he talked, you listen. And his results, of course, his 10 years as the head football coach were incredible. And then I come down to my dad. An interesting thing, he never directly coached me. He was the ends coach in football, I, I play quarterback. He was the distance coach in track, no way was I running more than a lap. <laughs> but the neat big picture thing was he coached me every day. He coached me every day of my life in the big picture things. And again, I take that with me every day. So where does that lead me is I get a phone call from Coach Gabrielson and he's telling me, wow, you're, you're going to come back to West and celebrate this day. It's like neat for me because the people that I grew up with are here. And uh, again, I could go on and on and on, and hopefully today I can go on and on, but watching Tim folks die as a kid, as my dad was refereeing, and I'm looking at this guy in a diving board going, are you kidding me? Um, Danny Relich, like Frank said, just an incredible role model growing up. So I'd just like to conclude uh, by thanking uh, the foundation of those people and then trickle it back real quickly to my experience at Whitman where I had the incredible experience to be exposed to Coach Dracy, Coach Shalek, and Coach Doc Miller. And they laid the groundwork for the kids coming through Whitman to come up here and know what the expectation was. So if you put that all together, it was, can't miss. I mean, all of my friends, all of my teammates had the same experience. It was great. So thank you very much.
and I hope you enjoy this day as much as I do. Thanks. Next up, Becky Syrup. Now, Becky is our youngest uh, addition to our Hall of Fame. When you go out and look at our trophy cases, there's one letter jacket out there. And I know why, I probably know why Becky donated it to the school, because it was so heavy to wear, because she lettered like a thousand times here, and she was really one of our most decorated athletes. So again, Becky, Becky Sierra was one of the most decorated athletes in the history of Wall Coast West High School. Becky earned a total of 12 varsity letters during her career at, uh, at West and Cross Country basketball and soccer. Becky was a three-year state qualifier in cross country, placing ninth at the state in 2003. She was a first team all-conference in 2001, 2002, 2003, and 4. Becky earned all state honors in 2003 and hold our school records with a time of 14 minutes, 45 seconds. Becky was also a star on our girls basketball team, leading the team to conference championships in 2003 and 4. Becky earned second team all-conference in 2003 and 2004, and first team all-conference in 2004. In spring, Becky turned her talents to soccer, where she led her team to conference championships in 02, 03, 04, and 05, and a regional championship in 05. Becky earned first team all-conference recognition in 03, 04, 05, and all area recognition in 2005. Becky was awarded the 2005 Women's Sports Advocate of Wisconsin for Academics and Athletic Achievement. Becky went on to the University of Wisconsin Whitewater where she earned an additional seven varsity letters in track, basketball, and soccer. Becky's accomplishment in college soccer include record holder for most assists in a season, second most assists in a career, 2007, 8, 9, first team all conference, and 2009 all area and sportsmanship award. Becky is now working as an HR generalist for Quest CE while, she, uh, while attending graduate school for nursing. Becky remain, remains active by running in marathons and personal training at any time fitness. Class of 2005, 2015, Hall of Famer Becky Sierra. Tim Foles. Tim set the standard in high school diving for all divers who followed him at Wallacoast West. Tim was conference champion, state champion, and high school All-American in 1967 and 1968 at Wallacoast West. His legendary coach and fellow Tosa West Hall of Famer, Bob White, comments, Tim Foles was one of the best divers this state has ever seen. Although equipment and dive choices have changed, 
over the years, Tim would still be a champion today. Tim went on to start several dive clubs locally. He coached the following two state titles, Cliff Albino, Joe Fortier. He was a National Catholic High School champion in 1976. Uh, Annette Bryce Homestead High School in 1978. Billy McCormick, Brookville East High School in 1980. Tim left coaching to start a family and business career in February of 81. Tim moved back to Wisconsin in 1990 and started coaching at Ena High School in the fall of 96. Tim's coaching excellence again surfaced, leading numerous athletes to championship success. Some of Tim's accomplishments at Ena are produce seven state champions, two YMCA national champions in John Fox and Lauren Leroy, 14 All-Americans, voted the WISCA Dive Coach of the Year 12 times, recipient of the Red Smith Award in January 2013. Tim Folk's level of expertise and achievement at Wauwatosa West will be hard to match again, state's head coach Bob White. Class of 1968, inductee in 2015, Hall of Famer Tim Folk. Teresa is here with uh, her beautiful grand, 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 grandsons, Max and Sam, her husband, Tristan. Um, Angela, my daughter Angela with her, her partner, Jeff, is here. And my son, Nick, is here, who is a 2007 state diving champion in Wisconsin. Uh, and, and the last but not the least is uh, my wife, Lucy. I can't imagine her going through this again. I mean, all the hours, uh, all, all the late dinners, but she always did it with a smile on her face, and I'll never forget her for that. Uh, again, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clark, uh, Coach Gabe, thank you very much for your time. I'll, I'll never forget this as long as I live. Thank you much. Uh, Dan Benson referred to this earlier about the, the history and the legendary coaches and athletic directors and leadership that's on this stage here from 
all the folks at West. And our next inductee is definitely one of them. Tom Jansen started teaching and coaching at Wauwatosa School District in 1954. For the next three decades, Tom's involvement in Wauwatosa and Tosa West paved the way for the success of those who followed. He began his coaching career as an assistant football coach from 1954 to 60 for Wauwatosa West for Wauwatosa High School and continued as an assistant at Wauwatosa West from 61 to 64. Tom became the head football coach for Tosa West in 1965 and continued in that role to 1975. Tom was a head coach for the first two Suburban Conference football championships in 1965 and 75. His 11-year coaching record is 57-33 and two. Tom became the head wrestling coach in 1964 and started a program that today is one of our strongest in the school. He established the Green and White Wrestling Invitational, which was appropriately renamed to the Tom Jensen Wrestling Invite, which, by the way, is next week. Tom, uh, uh, Tom was the Wauwatosa West Athletic Director from 1967 to 1975 and former president of the Wauwatosa Education Association. He was promoted to the District Athletic Director in 1975 and held that position until 1989. Tom was a true leader getting involved in wherever he felt he could make a difference. He was president of the Wisconsin Athletic Directors Association from 1984 to 86 and Wisconsin Athletic Director of the Year in 1984. While developing the athletic department at Wauwatosa West, Tom also assisted in many other areas. Tom was a commissioner of the Milwaukee Suburban Conference from 1978 to 84, and was a host committee chairperson for the annual convention of the National Federation of State High School Directors and athletic, of Athletics at the Milwaukee Convention Center. Coach Jensen also was a recipient of the National Federation of the State High School Association citation in recognition of his contributions to interscholastic athletics in 1984 and also recipient of the Distinguished Service Award in 1986. Again, Tom, was uh, uh, I, I really appreciate what you've done here because I, I'm one of the, uh, he's one of my predecessors. So again, Tom, I, I appreciate everything you've done here Coach and Athletic Director, 2015 Hall of Fame inductee, Tom Jansen. side of town. Well, I wanted to go to West. I, I couldn't wait to get to West. The year that I went into ninth grade, they opened a new Catholic school in Green Bay, and my folks told me I was going to school there. <laughs> so uh, my dreams were kind of shattered right at that time. I came to Wauwatosa in 54, and seven years later, they opened another school. I had to apply for it and accept it. So the dreams that were shattered in 41 was a dream come true in 61. I made up the West. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are students here, you put four years in. There are times I suppose those four years seem like an eternity. For those of us who taught here those years, the years just fled by. And uh, during those years, we met athletes, we met teachers, we met coaches. We met parents, 
and they all contributed something that uh, created fond memories for all of us. One of the highlights for me were when my four children went through the West and they all became part of the athletic family. Uh, they all earned their coveted W's and I was proud of all of them. They were Tom, Mark, David, and Linda. West is more of a storehouse for memories, however. Uh, it was a stage in our lives. It was a stage that uh, we had a lot of things that developed during those years and carried on to us for years. And I'd like to thank West for the part they played in my life. I'd like to thank all the people who played a part in my life. And I thank you very, very much for tonight. Next Hall of Famer is Jeff Marole. Jeff was an outstanding swimmer and four-year letter winner at Wallacosa West. He was a four-time state finalist in the 100 backstroke, winning the WIAA state championship in 1974 and 75. Both wins were a state record time. His 1975 finish of 51.629 not only set the state high school record, which lasted 18 years, but also a national high school record. Jeff also participated on two state record setting uh, relays for Wallacosa West in both 1973 and 75. His tenure in high school swimming, swimming earned him all American status in 73, 74, and 75. Jeff began his swimming career in club and AAU programs based in Wallacosa. During the time, he set national age group record in a 100 meter backstroke and attained 25 world ranking, top 25 world ranking in a 100 meter backstroke. At one point, Jeff held all backstroke Wisconsin state records from 1973 to 1979. Jeff went on to attend the University of Wisconsin Madison on a full athletic scholarship. While there, he was runner up in the Big Ten Conference Championship in 1977 in both the 100 and 200 yard backstroke. He also participated on the All American 400 medley relay at the NCAAs in 1977. Jeff held the Badger team record in the 100 backstroke from 1975 to 1979. In 1972, Jeff achieved the Olympic trial qualifying standard for the 100 meter backstroke. He went on to achieve the 100 and 200 meter backstroke cuts in 1976 and 1980 as well. Jeff, Jeff attributes his success to both the faculty and coaches at Wauwatosa West. He commends the other elite athletes that competed with him and shared in his experiences throughout his swimming career. I believe Heidi is going to come up here and accept the award for Jeff. Is that accurate? Oh, there you go. Again, class of 75, 2015 Hall of Fame inductee, Jeff Merle. To be chosen for the Tosa West Hall of Fame is a great honor. I was blessed to have started high school in the middle of a swimming and diving dynasty at Tosa West. At the time, I was one of several All-Americans on our team. We were in contention for the team state title all four of my high school career years. Bob Sr. was the one who created this dynasty, and I would like to extend my deepest thanks to him and his family. Today, we are honoring another great man in the swimming world, Dan Benson. 
I would also like to extend a very special thank you to him for not disqualifying me for using a very advantageous lip turn <laughs> when setting the national high school backstroke record at the state meet in Madison. Incidentally, Bob White's son was the one who taught me the flip turn, which eventually helped me set two national records. I want to thank my parents and my family for their loving support. Our family is still very involved in the sport of swimming to this day. Our 1975 class was filled with star athletes and great coaches. Congrats to all of you and to all of the inductees. Thank you. Coach White, Coach Jansen, Coach Thompson, 
Coach Benson. We were fortunate enough to have those people there, and it was almost like the perfect recipe um, for, for athletic teams and, and how we perform. When a lender sees such recognition, it immediately brings to mind how grateful I am and thankful for all the support and guidance I received from teachers, coaches, and teammates. I wish my I wish my parents could be here tonight. They have passed, um, but I learned work ethic and discipline from them, and it was such a gift, and it was the tools I needed to succeed in life. And I, I just want to thank them. To my brother Jim, I want to thank him for being my teammate and best friend. I was fortunate enough, we, were, we played football. For a while there, we were playing, we were linebacker and linebacker. And it was such good memories. His love and support is always there. And my family, the, probably the most gratifying part of tonight is uh, my family, my, my wife Wendy, my son Ryan, my daughter-in-law Brooke, and my granddaughter Louisa are here to share this moment with me. It's such a great night. Thank you. from 1963 to 64. Art was voted the most outstanding member of the 63-64 basketball and track teams. He was selected to the Sentinel first team all suburban and journal second team all suburban basketball teams in 1964. Art Sanders was almost unbeatable on the track. He was a suburban conference track and field indoor champion in the 60 yard dash, the 60 yard high hurdles, and the high jump in 1964. When the weather warmed up, Art was a Suburban Conference track and field outdoor champion in 120 high hurdles, the 180 low, and the high jump. After the conference season ended, Art Sanders led the Tulsa West Trojans team to a second place finish in the Wisconsin State Track and Field Championships, where he won the 120 yard high hurdles, the 180 yard low hurdles, and placed second in the high jump. Art almost won the state meet by himself. Art's high school career was noticed by Miami University of Ohio when they awarded him the first George L. Ryder Alumni Scholarship in track and field in 1964 and 65. His college career was just as impressive as he led his team to the Mid-American Conference Track and Field Championship in 67. Art won the conference championship in the 120 yard high hurdles in 1968 and was a finalist with a finalist in the 120 yard high hurdles at the Penn Relays and a finalist at the All Ohio Meet. Art qualified for the NCAA Indoor Championship in the 60 yard high hurdles in 1968, and he also, and he is also the long time record holder at Miami in all indoor and outdoor sprints, high hurdles, 440 yard, and mile relay events. Art was the leading track and field team point scorer. 1967 through 68. Art Sanders uh, attributes much of his success to his coach and fellow 2015 inductee Dan Benson. Art states, I can't imagine where my athletic career would have been without the support and kindness from Coach Benson. Class of, 19 <laughs> class of 1964, Hall of Fame class 2015, Hall of Famer Art Sanders. Son, 
You'll notice that uh, Coach, uh, her athletic director, Haberson, when he was talking about, they mentioned that I played basketball, football, and ran track. And that's all he said about football. That's because, no. <laughs> Coach Benson and Coach Tam 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 Jansen put me on the end of the line because the other team was, was so afraid that if I caught the ball, there was no one in the state that was going to catch me, first of all. And, but I was scared to get hit. So you can imagine how good a football player I was not. But nevertheless, I played. Basketball is a different story. I wish, I wish the other person that could be here today was Warren Cartier. And despite being so full of myself, just because I could hit my head on the rim, uh, that I was difficult to coach. If it hadn't been for him and his insistence on, on, on discipline, that uh, I wouldn't have been named uh, to, I guess I'm the first, well, the first person to get named to an all-conference team. Uh, so that's, that's good. So, uh, Warren Carnegie, finally Coach Benson, who I grew to appreciate as almost as a surrogate father. What else can he do with the guy that drives you home from practice every night in his, in his Volkswagen? He used to shift with his foot. He would get real racing, you know. And he'd shift that second with his foot. Wow. That was, that was pretty impressive. But anyway, he, when he tells you we had no, no uh, facilities, we ran on the football field. That was our track. And for, during the three years that I was here, Pretty much it indoors, around the parking lot, wherever was going, whatever was going on, that was what we were doing. So, uh, Coach uh, Benson, Coach Dan Sutton, what do you think? Uh, anyway, they were my track guys. And since probably possibly one of the best things that ever happened to me was winning the state championship, the person who uh, happened to be my girlfriend. Is my wife today. <laughs> now, I won't reveal you with the in between, okay? But, so, but I'm, I'm especially, and I'm really glad to receive this because she was there in that hot June day. mentioned all the folks that are here and their varying degrees of expertise and dedication. I remember I avoided Coach White like the plague. <laughs> she wasn't throwing a kickboard at me. <laughs> and swimming was not my thing. <laughs> Three minutes to find him. 
and because he had it, what, he had exactly the day, exactly everything, and what page it was on. I mean, it was it was really neat. So make sure when we go to the unveiling on the wall, you take a look at that picture. Next up, coach and athletic director John Townsend. John began his teaching and coaching career at Seymour Union High School in 1960 where he was a head football coach, head wrestling coach, while teaching U.S. history. In 1962, John moved down the road to Mondovi High School, where he was the head wrestling, head golf, and assistant football coach until 1967. John came to Wauwatosa West in 1967, where he made an immediate impact on the athletic department and in the classroom, and continued to do so for 28 years. John was an assistant football coach from 1967 to 75, head wrestling coach from 1967 to 1985, assistant boys tennis from 1986 to 1990, and head girls tennis from 82 to 88, and finally the athletic director from 1989 to 1995. John was head wrestling coach for 19 years. During that time, John was two suburban tournament champions, 1970 and 74, two WIAA regional tournament champions, coached 15 state tournament qualifiers, and four state place winners. In 1985, John was uh, received at the, the Wisconsin Wrestling Coaches 25 Year Award for Merit. As head girls tennis coach for seven years, John coached numerous conference champions and the WIAA state qualifiers, and attributes much of the credit to his fellow Hall of Famer, assistant coach Karen White. In 1989, John became the athletic director where he organized Wauwatosa Athletic Booster Club, which provided valuable service and funding for the Tosa West Athletics and still does today. John was instrumental in starting the athletic training program and helped raise funds for the purchase of the golf cart needed for the trainer to move between athletic sites of competition. John also started the initial program, which, with the help of the Tosa West Booster Club, to move varsity soccer field to Whitman Middle School, where it is now one of the best soccer venues in the state. During John's tenure as athletic director, he always tried to do little something extra to help Tosa West athletics. Job well done, John Thompson. <laughs> Coach and athletic director, 2015 Hall of Famer, John Thompson. Uh, three years ago, my wife and I were up north, and I got a phone call. And it was my son. And he said, how's everything going? I said, fine. What's up? And he said, guess who is the new principal at Wauwatosa West? <laughs> and I said, I have no idea. He says, Frank Calarco. I said, why does that bring a smile to my face? <laughs> of all the people that I could think of to be the principal of this high school, Frank Calarco has to be number one. First of all, he was a student here. And he was a great athlete in three sports. And he's gone through what Walters West is all about. And now he's the leader of Walters West. Frank, congratulations, and thank you for everything you've done. Also, I want to thank Jeff Abramson for all the work he's done putting this together. As a former AD, I know how much work you do. And, and you've done an excellent job. There's also two guys I hope would be here tonight. Um, one was here, I don't know if the other one came, but they're uh, Jeff Rebar and Rich Dwyer. These two gentlemen were instrumental in starting the Booster Club here at Walters West, which was very instrumental in, in buying a lot of extra little things for our athletic program. And uh, they did a great job, and I, I thank them. Um, my three children went to the school and graduated. And I'm real proud of that. My daughter Karen is not here tonight. She's in Florida working on her golf game. <laughs> but my uh, son-in-law, Jim Skoniak, and Karen and uh, Taylor are 
here. I'm happy that they were able to make it. My daughter Mary Eddie and her husband are here, Kurt. Kurt, I mentioned your name. <laughs> <laughs> and also Tom and my grandson. My other grandson, Corey, uh, is in Minneapolis working on an internship, trying to pay all his college debts. My son John and his wife Lisa are here with my two granddaughters, Danielle and Brandy, and also my grandson Matthew, who's also home from college. Um, Jackie and her husband, my granddaughter Jackie, and her husband uh, Travis is here, along with Michael, my grandson also. Um, Alyssa, Michael's wife, is home with our great granddaughter, Kennedy, who keeps us all running around in circles. <laughs> I'm getting these cards mixed up here. <laughs> as far as coaching is concerned, uh, any success or failure can be shared by the very capable assistants. In wrestling, I had Don Brenner, who is in, he's in Arizona now. But Randy Aloysia is here, and he's here tonight. And thank you, Randy, for everything you've done. And that brings me to girls tennis. I don't exactly know how I got to be head girls tennis coach. <laughs> I, I played socially tennis, played tennis socially, played doubles. Uh, when I played singles, I played like four games and I was done. But I was, I, I, I took over the job and I was fortunate enough to have an assistant like Karen Weiss, who forgot more tennis than I knew. <laughs> and, and I was thinking about that and, and uh, after about three practices, I thought, John, why don't you give this young lady her head? You know, so she just find out what she wants to do. And that's what I did. And she was very, very helpful. And I took care of the JV most of the time, and she ran the varsity. And she was very successful. I'm very happy to see that she's up here. Um, sometimes it's hard to understand how you can get an award like this when you had so much fun <laughs> doing, doing it. I mean, for 28 years, I enjoyed myself here at Volatiles West. Um, I met so many wonderful young people who uh, gave more to me than I probably gave to them. But it was really funny when I got the call from Jeff about this award. So many, many young people that were so outstanding. Thanks again for all this wonderful honor and all the time the good times that I walked in the school district um, this afternoon it all flashed in front of me. All the fun things we did and all the interesting things that happened. And I could tell, I tell stories to my family and now we're, I'm getting to a point in my age where they all say, Dad, we heard that one already. You know what I mean? <laughs> in fact, we heard it twice. And I said, okay, I won't. So thank you everybody. Jill was a conference scoring leader at 21 points per game and the Woodland Conference Player of the Year. She was named to the first team all-conference twice, all suburban, all area, and second team all-state. She led her team to become regional champions and sectional runners-up. She finished her career first in the following all-time statistical categories, two points made, two point percentage, and total field goal percentage, free throws made, free throw percentage, steals, 
offensive rebounds, scoring game average, total points in a season at 429, and total points in a career at 1,061. Wow. In tennis, Jill was named to the All-State Tennis Team. She was a three-time state qualifier and placed third in doubles at the WIA Division II State Tennis Tournament and placed first and second twice in her conference tournament in doubles. In track, Jill was a two-time state qualifier in the Division I WIAA State Tournament in both the 110 high hurdles and the 300 meter low hurdle. She was a conference champion in the low hurdles, high hurdles twice, and mile relay and high hurdle relay. Jill attended the University of Wisconsin-Madison where she earned a varsity letter on the Wisconsin Lightweight Crew team and was named the 1996-97 Scholar Athlete of the Year with a 4-point GPA. Class of 95, Hall of Fame Class of 2015, Hall of Famer, Jill Weidenbaum Schildhelm. Thank you so much for recognizing me for this honor. When I think back to my favorite high school memories, every one of them involves sports. I loved every aspect, the competition, my teammates, and my coaches, which includes Karen Light and Rick Geraci, who's here tonight, Mike Petroviak, Tony Gale, and Heather Donovan Sarah. However, I never would have achieved this accomplishment without my parents' support. They were my most devoted fans. They never missed one basketball game, one tennis match, or one track meet. I never missed anything else other than for that matter, whether it was sports or theater or band or anything like that. I remember not feeling ready to compete until I saw their faces in the stands. I want to especially thank my dad, who introduced me to all sports so that I could discover the ones I loved best. He spent countless hours feeding me basketballs at the YMCA, timing me at the track, and playing tennis with me up north. I still have the many notes he wrote to me after my sporting events that included words of encouragement, advice, and statistics. Receiving this honor cements his role in my athletic career. Thanks again to those who nominated me, and I'm proud to have represented Roller Coaster West athletically. tennis, Karen earned a trip to the WIAA State Tennis Championship all four years. As a singles player, she placed third in the state in 72, first in 1973 and 1974. In 1973 and 74, Karen went undefeated. As a team, they also placed first in state in 1972, 1973, and second in 1971 and 1974. Karen earned MVP honors in 1974 and was awarded Outstanding Athlete in 1974. Karen also lettered in basketball three years, volleyball two years, and track one year where she qualified for the WIA State Tournament. Throughout her high school career, Karen played on the USTA tournaments, winning numerous singles titles and doubles titles. She was the recipient of the Frank Parker Jr. Tennis, which honored the top ranked player who also exhibited excellent qualities and good sportsmanship. She was a member of the Wisconsin Junior Whitman Club team, representing Wisconsin in interstate play. Karen also represented Wisconsin in 1975, playing in a 17 magazine tournament in Mission Viejo, California. Karen attended Ohio University Conference School, Murray State, Kentucky, on a four-year tennis scholarship. She played number one singles, number two doubles, all four years. In 1976, she was voted ideal freshman by her peers. In 1976, she was also recognized as Outstanding Female Freshman Athlete of the Year. In 1978, she received the Outstanding Women's Athlete as well as MVP in 1978 and 79. Karen was all Ohio Valley Conference in 1978 and 1979. In 1980 and 81, Karen was given the opportunity to as the assistant girls tennis coach University of South Carolina. During these two years, the team was nationally ranked seventh and
do love them. Due to illness, her fa family carried Key back to Wauwatosa in 1982. For the next 25 years, she served as boys tennis coach and assistant girls tennis coach at Wauwatosa West while working full-time outside the school system. Karen is a firm believer in giving back to the community that made her the person she has become. She stressed the importance of working together and commitment to whatever you do, no matter what level of sport or other activities you participate in. Class of 1975-2015 Hall of Famer, Karen Weiss. Sharing all that, am I tired? <laughs> um, so, number one thing I can't think, stop thinking about before I get started is I have a brother that's 11 months older than I am. He played football, he played basketball, he played tennis, and I beat him to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> so, what an honor to be chosen amongst all these coaches and athletes and to be part of the class of 75. I mean, as Danny was talking, what a great, great um, year that was. Um, you know, we need to thank Jeff, as everybody's done, in the Booster Club, because without that, I mean, we wouldn't be here. Um, when I think back to, all, you know, after once he found me and all the time leading up um, to this, it seems like a lot of my friends and my family has been really excited about being in the Hall of Fame. They're like, aren't you excited about this? I said, yeah, I'm excited. And um, you know, so leading up to this last um, last night, my roommate Ellen gave me a Hall of Fame dinner, and uh, with that, um, Nikki and CJ and um, Nikki Fahey went to high school here with her brother and her brother CJ. They sent me some beautiful flowers, and there was a picture of my mom sitting on the table and a bottle of wine. And I got to tell you, today I have a Hall of Fame headache. <laughs> So, um, never dreamed 40 years ago, like Debbie was saying, that, and 50 pounds ago, that, um, <laughs> be, you know, sitting up here, you know, as Hall of Famers, I guess, because 40 years ago there wasn't the Hall of Fame. But now, um, to all of the new athletes coming up, you know, now they have something good and something solid to strive for. Um, I can't tell you, you know, how much being at this school and being a student athlete, you know, has done for myself and has done for my career. It's built so much discipline into my life, into my life, and so much um, honor. And I'm really, really so proud to say, you know, to wear my green and white and to say that I'm a proud Trojan. Um, you know, I I keep continuing to say I'd rather be dead than red, and, <laughs> and I'm not even. That's even legal to even say that. <laughs> and then to go away to college, and then seven years, you know, after graduating from college, no, wait, it didn't. It didn't take me seven years to graduate from college. <laughs> it took six. But, um, I was an athlete. I wasn't smart like Debbie. She was a four point She was really smart. But, but I did. Um, uh, Coach Thompson gave me the chance to come back here and, and to coach and. Um, and it was such a thrill working with Rick Tracy and Coach Thompson and Costa and uh, Kara and just numerous, numerous people. And what an experience to be able to give back to the school um, everything that I was able, that I received. It was just so wonderful. Um, and then to work, um, as uh, Franco was saying, you know, you know, we had some libations together. I work at Willard Coors and I've been there now 32 wonderful years. And uh, for them to allow me to get up every day to be, make sure that I was, you know, here by three o'clock, uh, you know, I mean, that's just such a great commitment, you know, from um, from Miller Brewing Company, you know, to allow me to do that. So if I had a beer in my hand, I'd say cheers to them. <laughs> um, you know, the success of a good coach, you know, and I, I think uh, Coach Thompson drilled this into my head, is that you never ever get called into his office for a parent complaint. And um, I think I did a pretty nice job with that. You know, I, I think we built a really, really great tennis program. Um, and so, and I am very, very proud of that, to have people like Joe going through and everything, and just a lot, a lot of great people. 
So um, I did the coach 25 years and my job kind of changed where I had to then um, start beginning to, um, to travel a lot. I want to thank a lot of people that came here today, the John Patel family and their kids and James Patel and my sister Kathy and her husband Tim and Christopher and um, got a nice little email from Jessica and um, my brother couldn't make it. He's at a Christmas party. That's why I could talk about him. But I also wrote a little poem that I thought I would end with. And here it goes. We're here today to celebrate the induction of something oh so great. Whether you're a coach or player, it's all the same. We 13 made it to the Hall of Fame. Some played tennis and basketball too, others football, swimming, track, to name a few. There was obvious success along the way. That's why we made it to the Hall of Fame. The coaches up here on the stage were very dedicated every single day. They coached the strong and the weak ones too, the ones who could barely tie a shoe. Their mantra, their mantra was to work very hard, and you'll see it, our team reach for the stars. That is why I'm here to say they are coaches that made it to the Hall of Fame. I'm a Trojans, we'll fight for you. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> Is our song. We could sing it all night long. So thanks to Jeff for this day and all the planning along the way. I tried to write a poem that had game because here we are in the Hall of Fame. And that about sums it up, you know, for me, and I can't thank everybody, and this is, this is a huge honor, believe me, and I look forward to the rest of the night. Thank you. Last, but definitely not least, Bob, like Bob, I, I just got a, a text I don't know if they got back. I know our swim team wanted to get back to say honor to you, but the boys' swim team just won the Sheboygan South invite. 11, or eight of 11 events they won, and Danny Larson set a pool record in the 500. <laughs> Coach Bob White began coaching Wauwatosa in 1951 and continued until his retirement in 1989. During his 39 years of coaching boys and 12 years of coaching girls, 78 through 89, his teams claimed two WIAA state titles, 14 consecutive sectional championships, and eight suburban conference championships. Bob's team boasted 57 All-Americans and 66 All-State swimmers, and included three national champions and one national record holder. His teams produced numerous state and conference championships, and record holders. One of the biggest swim meets in southeastern Wisconsin is held annually at Wauwatosa West and is fittingly called the Bob White Invite. Bob's impressive coaching career included more than 400 dual meet victories and Coach of the Year honors in 1974 and 75. He was awarded the Scholastic Coach Magazine's Gold Coaching Award. Coach White was inducted into the Wisconsin Swim Coach Hall of the National Interscholastic Swim Hall of Fame, and the National Collegiate Scholastic Coaching Association Hall of Fame. Bob was a founder and charter member of uh, uh, WISCA in 1951 and later elected president and vice president of the organization. He was an active member of NISCA for over 45 years. Bob was a NISCA Wisconsin delegate for eight years and an Arkansas State Delegate for five years and received the NISCA Outstanding Service Award in 1982. Coach White is a legend in the swim world and has passed down his skills to his son who became coach of the U.S. national team to Russia. Again, Coach Bob White, 2015 Hall of Famer, Coach White. Uh, 
I normally not like this, but last night uh, something happened in my back and I'm having real problems. So this is the best I can do, I'm sorry. But uh, I, I really appreciate this, uh, this award. Thank you, Jeff, for your introduction. I also want to thank our swim team parents for all the help on running, running our meets and the assistant coaches also for their many years of experience. Jack Quirk, Chip Martin, and others were always there. Also, Chip's mom for help, for further help in watching for foreign exchange swimmers. A lot of people didn't know this. <laughs> Who could help our team and give him a special experience in the U.S. When I first came here to Tosa, there was only one three-lane pool in our system at Hawthorne. As most of you know, we now have six lane racing pools, including two with separate diving pools, of which one is here at West. We became one of the first schools to install an electric timing and judging systems for meets. West Boys team won many suburban and state sectional championships, including an undefeated boys season that was captured off, capped off by winning the 1971 state with the highest team score ever. The West Boys team also won the last suburban conference championship, which makes me mad all the time. Uh, <laughs> in 1985, not winning the championship, but not having the Suburban Conference, which makes me mad. <laughs> Two of our swimmers have had exceptional experiences uh, since graduation. Jeff Merle broke the 100 backstroke high school record and was picked to represent the U.S. for a team in London in international competition. My son Bob was picked, picked as a national team coach for a team to go to Russia, which was won by the US. <laughs> it was a great 30 years of coaching here at West. Before I finish, I would especially like to thank my wife who's sitting down here in the audience, uh, for all her support to the school, the teams, and to me. Without her support for all these last 66 years we've been married, we couldn't have done all the things that bring me here today. Thank you for this honor. It will always be a great part of my coaching life here as the first head coach of swimming at West. Thank you very much to all of you and our athletic directors and all the rest for help, helping me out. Thank you.
right off of 124th and North. Uh, we will have uh, uh, some beverages that Karen Weiss supplied <laughs> somewhere down the road. Uh, so make sure you're there for that. And then four tickets, there's four drink tickets in there, two that for a beer product and two for a cocktail product. All right, so again, the night's just started. After we do the unveiling, there is a spaghetti dinner that we ask if any of their tickets available there. But again, this night is for you. This is such a special occasion, a history that we have up on this stage here for Wauwatosa West is unbelievable. Some of the records that, whether they be swim records, football records, track records, are just unbelievable. And as an athletic director and former coach for 25 years, we all know how hard it is to be great. It takes a lot of special discipline. I wish we are filming this. Uh, I'm going to show it to every member. I'm going to show it on a, uh, 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 an assembly for all our athletes to know how if you really want to succeed in life, whether it's a sport or in business, you have to have commitment. All those things we did learn in sports, the commitment, the dedication, they seem cliche, but that's what it is. The recipe for success is fairly simple. Simple to know, hard to do. Well, this group of 13 up here have done it. And again, congratulations. Give them a So again, straight down, right before you go into the gym, you'll see the